up guys, welcome to the episode of Pat T's Performance. Today we are in the driveway. Well actually it's like 20 degrees out. So we're gonna retreat inside the garage, okay? And we are finally going to work on the electrical system for the supercharged 420cc Hemi swapped Arians 1128. <coughs> now, two things I noticed right off the bat, right? We start to rub through the belt cover, which isn't a big deal. I have an idea for this. We'll talk about that later because it's pulled out. Okay, number two, we are going to go back into the engine and we are going to swap out the coils. Uh, the coils that I got now are off a Honda generator. The coils that are in there now are individual coils. And they're only putting out like four to six amps. We need more like anywhere from like eight to ten. And on the Honda Genset coils, that's what they are rated for. Do not ask me the difference. I am not technical like that. Just after doing some research online, that is what I have come across. So I also bought a battery. As you guys see, I, start, I did the electrical work. I did have it running with the key start. But because I abandoned the project, I yanked off the battery. And I put it on that BCS tiller that I flipped during the summer. So let's get this in the garage. Let's get warm. And uh, let's get this party started. Alright, so we're in the garage. These are the Honda... Genset coils. These are all for generator. I'll take it calling them Genset. Get this tube. I guess both of these are power. I don't know. We'll get this baby undone and we'll, we'll get it inside the generator. We'll get it inside the, the engine itself. Now, if you guys watched my first video, this is probably how you guys ended up here in the first place with this. There's not a lot of info on the 420cc, okay? So what I ended up doing is because the engine was off the machine, I pulled everything out, and it was right then and there. Now that it's on the machine, it's not going to be that much easier because then I have to unbolt the motor, unbolt the sheet bracket, <laughs> Unbolt the bracket from the motor, undo the belts, and just kind of push this thing forward, which I'm not interested in doing. So my idea is, maybe, maybe, loosen up the bolts on the handlebars, and kind of drop the handlebars down as far as I can go. Or, uh, you know what, forget that. I could undo this here, undo this bracket here, and I should have straight up access to the back of the engine. And we know what that means, right? I'll put this thing on, you know, just to make this easier, I'm going to put this thing on its front end. Let me shut off that. Yeah, we're going to put this in the service position. abso freaking lootly All right, so here we are. We're going to undo this here, okay, undo this bracket here, and that should give me full access to pulling this panel off. That's the goal, that's the hope, but honestly, because I'm going to try it, it's, it's worth it, why not? I am going to try and do it without pulling off the levers. I want to see how far I could go. You know what I mean? We don't know until we try. And it might save us just a little bit of work. One, two, three, four. Alright? We're recapping. One, two, Three and four is up there, and we'll be good to go. All right, so we're gonna start pulling off these bolts. Eight millimeter. I have my Milwaukee ratchet. Let me just get a little thing set aside so I know where to put these back. We're going to start zipping away. Right, you guys are recording. Yep. 
Sorry. So probably by the time I post the video, right? We'll be doing our first freestyle live, right? Our second, our first live had a purpose. And that was for um, announcing the giveaway. We had a great time. So we're gonna push that again. Uh, so my wife had a good idea, so I'm really excited about that. So the goal is, right, because a lot of you guys ask me questions about projects you guys got going on, I got going on, a lot of you guys got some really cool stuff, and I'm like, what do I tell you guys, you know, show me that too, I want to see cool projects, because I show you mine, I think, I think they're cool, All right, so that's what we're going to do, we're going to figure out, because a lot of you guys got to, you guys got to get on Instagram, right, when you guys get on Instagram, you guys can show me what you're working on, and I really enjoy that. This thing has a lot of fuel. I don't want to give up that factory. We might have to pull this out. I really don't want to. Judging. Okay, that went out nice and easy. Alright, so let's see. Can we get this out? I think we might. I think we might. Okay, good. So we got wiggled it loose. Now something has to come out. Alright, so these are going to come out. Wiggle these nice and loose. These are just wing nuts. Don't go crazy. Yeah, so what was I saying? So yeah, so a lot of you guys are talking to me about your projects. And shout out to this guy, Dan, right? This guy, Dan, motivated me to forge ahead on this project. And this has been sitting dormant for almost a year. Because really, I've been busy. And number two, we've had no snow. If you guys found my YouTube channel, right, before I started taking YouTube to where it is now, I was using YouTube as a supplement to my income per se, where I was taking videos of snowblowers that I was selling and showing them how they perform and work. So I was, so that's where the Snow Tech 24 video came about. That was the only snow we got, and believe me, I took a couple of other videos too, but that was after me shoveling snow to a pile so I could blow it. I tried taking out my 1128 and it just wasn't enough snow. Now, what are we hitting? Are we can get that thing. Huh? After that, obviously, we met and I did a little video on this, did a couple update videos on it, and I kind of parked it at that. Um, so he commented asking me a bunch of questions. A couple of people have too. But he was like, man, I had a perfect Toro 928, and because of your videos, it pushed me to do this swap. And he's asking me a bunch of questions, and he says, you got to see this thing throw snow. And I'm like, holy, it's like this guy saw my video, did the swap, and I'm still in the process of doing mine. Now, based upon the comments that we have, I've told him to join Instagram. He's going to send me photos of it, and we're going to feature his build, hopefully, on the channel. Okay? And if you want your build, if you want your build featured on the channel, or even your project, right? Talk. Let's talk. 
Show me your projects, all right? Instead of asking me for help, right? Show me some pictures. So anyway, uh, he has the joystick shoot control, and obviously I don't think he had any clearance issues like we had to do on Aries. So this is a 24 millimeter that we're using to bust off the flywheel nut. Now this is very important, what you're seeing here, right? This plastic is the fan to keep the engine cool. Let's put this back on here. Don't ask me why I'm thinking I could just pull this off like a normal person. Because, you know, I have had this off in the past. So let's... So I'm doing I'm trying not to pry against the engine. I'm trying to pry kind of sort of on the machine. Maybe I need a longer pry bar. Yep, alright, we're free. Big boy. So let's see. All right, so here are the two charging coils, right? And I wired them. Even though they're two separate, they're in series. I forgot which one's stock and which one's not. But they're identical. And they are the same. So these should be 10 millimeter. Okay, and we'll get those out of the way. I highly doubt that these were, yeah, because remember, I had to, these were, yeah, sorry, so this is how I know. OEM, aftermarket, because these are my, these are my bolts that I put in after the fact. Alright. So, let's get this going. Those have lock washers on there, in case you guys didn't watch my video. If you guys didn't watch my first video, right? In the description are going to be the phases of this build. So you guys can kind of get caught up in where I started at and, and where I came from. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Alright, so we got this out. Yes, coil, coil. And this has to come out because that's holding everything down. So we're going to go back to an 8 millimeter. Whew. I feel like if we get this done and we're successful, we're literally on the home stretch per se. So we have to get this out of here, and this one's through here. Oh, this is factory. And 
this one was not, which is fine. So let's cut that. I don't think we could pull these out one by one. I could always hit it. So let's do that. Alright, so out the door we go. This is what we got here. The see alright, so this is the one I added. This white one. Whoops. So we just need to get it through this rubber grommet. That's exactly what we're going to do. So I was speaking to uh, Dan, he was asking about electrical stuff. So I told Dan, hey man, listen, if you want the electrical stuff, let me know. Get on Instagram, he said he didn't have one. Give me your email address, give me your mailing address, and I will send you some stuff. So that's what he did. So big ups to him for listening. So here we are. So listen, this generator coil set, you got two wires, I guess two power wires each. There is no power on ground. Okay, it's grounded against the machine. So I'm just thinking out loud, right? That this is where the double power output comes. So we're just going to cut these, right? And we'll go from there. Get this out of the way. Maybe we'll bring you guys closer. Yeah, we'll get you guys closer. <sighs> this is really nice heat shrink tubing. So we're going to keep that. We like that. So let's get these mounted up. They can only go one way. You see that here? See these? They sit. See how it's shouldered? It sits right in. Just like that. And this one will sit uh -oh. just like that. Now, why do these feel a little snug per se? kind of don't like that am I allowed to say that? Well, they can only go one way. So I have got that. Now we need to get our rubber gasket slash grommet back in there. All right, so here's the rubber grommet that slides right here into the engine housing. It's like so, we're going to try and retain as much factory spec as possible because also it's going to keep you know, grime and crud out of there. And we don't want no grime and crud inside our engine, per se. Alright, so that's perfect. So I'm happy. Got that in there. Alright, so we'll slide that back in. Okay. Get these hanging out the voltage regulator. Hopefully, yeah, we have enough that sticks out. Okay. So now I'm just I'm trying to see if I could pull out the appropriate amount of wire. I'm just fishing it through my cluster stuff of wiring. And I don't want to have I want to have some slack, but I don't want to have much. Because like I said, I'm just, I don't want anything at court on that flywheel. So that's going to kind of be where we're at. Oh, I'm pulling it the wrong way. I'm pulling the sheathing off. I don't want this sheathing. I mean, I want it. I mean, how? I'm saying this wrong. All right, so let's start all over again. Let's start. Put the sheathing 
to here. And then... Let's get this let's get these bolted in, right? We know where they're gonna go and we know they're good to go. So as always, anti seize on the threads. See that's weird. These are thicker? Uh oh. Am I going to need hardware? Yeah. I think these might be thicker. Whoa, hold on, let me go grab another coil. That could be the secret sauce. Oh, yeah, these are a lot thicker. Wow, okay, so this is where the Genset coils come in. This is how they're going to put out more power. Look at these things. Ugh. Look, can you guys see that? And you know what? I am going to take this one off to check this out. Check out the thickness. OEM and Genset. How, how many rows can we count? Two, four, six, eight, twelve maybe? Two, four. Yeah, this is... We'll count this up. Two, four, six, eight, twelve, sixteen, eight, twenty-two of these. Verse twelve. So this is going to be awesome. This is the secret sauce. This is the secret sauce. So you know what, Dan? I am going to inform you of this. And if you still want the coils, you can have them. If you don't want the coils, then I have to go through my notes and see if I could find um, the OEM part numbers for this Genset coil pack. So this is going to be awesome. See? I like this. And that's why these nuts are a little... These bolts are a little short. These bolts will be fine, right? They're just holding in coils. They're not holding in anything crazy. So let's... I wonder if we'll, we should have... Hopefully we don't have any clearance issues with the flywheel. Let's see, but this one isn't even catching. One side's catching, and one side is not. These are the same way. Okay. Oh, you know what? Because this isn't really... Not fit. Oh, okay. Now they're in snug. See, that one's not going in all the way. What the hell? Alright, so that's good. Maybe we'll switch this up. So that works. And this is not working. I'm going to be one bolt short. What the hell? It does not make any sense. Zero. Zip. Zun. Zilch. Alright, so let's see. If you just put a little bit of pressure. No, we're not catching. We are not catching. Yeah, these are 
sure. We're gonna have to get more in the bolts. I'm not I'm not comfortable with just a couple of turns. And that's only because this thing is gonna vibrate like crazy. Like crazy. I'm gonna go through my junk drawer. Alright, so we're back. Have to run some errands with wife for the wife and uh, in the meantime I stopped at the hardware store. So I took a picture of what I needed. A little bit bigger. This is what we need. This is what the factory calls for here on the left. New one on the right. So let's get those in. And uh we'll get this party started. Oh that's right you have to uh, take those off. Now, as you guys notice, right, you see, because I'm reinstalling everything, what am I not using? My electrical tools. This is aluminum. So please, please do not, do not go crazy. You do not have to um, put these in with your tool. Do them by hand. Do them by hand, please. Here we go. First one up. Okay, it's got some room. It's actually got a lot more room than I feel comfortable with. All right, so I'm gonna run this down by hand. Can we get this snug? Yes, perfect. I'll snug these up by hand. Let me just get this one off. Nice and easy. <sighs> so let's tighten these by hand. So I'm just getting them snug like this. Quarter turn. Just getting them snug. That's it. No torque specs. Just going right by mechanical instinct and by hand. Get snug and a quarter turn. These are not going anywhere. Alright, let's stick this down in here through the wires. Okay. We'll get some more anti seize because I know this was missing here. This is where. Put that there. Okay, now we have to put this plate back, which we know was like this. Was it the other way? Uh oh. We have to go through the footage. Yeah, well, this should. <laughs> uh oh. I will put that clamp in there. Just see, look at that. Anti seize gets all over you. And I was even trying to be nice about it. And of course, just like that, we'll start this by hand. Oh, gotta get 
this wire tucked in. So that's got a hold. That's neat millimeter. Of course, of course. Eight millimeter, where'd you go? Just had you. Alright. So, just a little life hack, right? A little tip. If you want to test your marriage, your significant or your relationship with your significant other, get any C's on your hand and get it on everything else. <laughs> and see how well she likes that. Obviously, the first time, she's not going to be happy. Actually, there really shouldn't be another time, but just see how she reacts. If she could survive any seas. she could rise an anti-seas attack, she can survive anything. Because that shit gets everywhere. So what I'm trying to do now is get these wires out of the way into the factory slot so it reduces these getting caught. That is the plan. And it's a little difficult because you have two different lengths per se. Oh, we're going to see something real quick. See what I'm stressing on. Stressing over this sheath, right? So we got one, two. Hmm. Huh. That is really interesting. You see that? You figure these would be tied together, but they're not. For some reason. And that's why when I pull on one, I can't get them to tighten up. Obviously I am not your Honda Genset Whisperer. So we will work with what we have. So like I said, the only reason why I have to go this route, you guys don't have to go through all this trouble, if you guys aren't going to try and do the same thing I'm doing, heat your hand grips, charge the battery, and this light. Now you might be able to get away with it if you were running an LED light, but um, I know this build is pretty not stock and wild. Don't, I don't have a valid answer of why I'm so hell-bent on keeping this factory light and not ditching for an LED. I just, I don't know, I just don't want to draw into my earrings. That's all. I just, like I said, I don't have any other valid excuse. I really don't. I know it's a poor excuse. I just want to try and, this machine is not original, but I want to try and keep it that way. I mean, I'm a, I'm not a purist, right? You guys seen that, some of my builds, but I don't know why. I'm just, I'm really hell bent on keeping this stock looking. I don't. That's all I have to say. I'm not gonna say anything more. All right. Let's put the flywheel back on. This is, has a keyway on it, so we have to match up the keyway, and hopefully. Nothing wrong.
put our cooling fan on. It just goes on one way. These tits, right? One, two, three, line up on the flywheel so you can't get it wrong. Obviously, this is a two hand operation. When it shouldn't be. Boobies, where are you, boobies? Come on, find the hole. There we go. Locked in. This same way. Three holes. And this is something you definitely want to start from here. Definitely. Yeah, it sounds good. It's not grabbing on anything, so that's good. All right, so we're going to put the cover on. I'm not going to bore you with that. Just make sure that this little rubber grommet on the side. Have you guys so freaking... There's a rubber grommet right here. Remember that one we pulled off? Make sure it goes back in the slot. So here we are, hooked up the battery, power ground, pretty simple. This is your bridge rectifier from the factory. We don't need that because this doubles up as that. Okay, so one coil wire went to pink and gray, and the other coil wire went to yellow. Okay, so let's turn this puppy on. Let's see what we got. No choke. <sighs> Key stop. Batteries wired up, positive, negative. I grounded everything off the engine. One coil wire went to pink, okay? The other one went to orange. Well, I'm sorry, yellow, okay? Because remember, this part right here, yellow comes off of the machine to power the heated hand grips and the light, okay? <coughs> and this is just part of the... Uh, yellow goes to light, yep, this is light light, pink, it helps power everything as well. So uh, we'll get that done, and let's give this thing a rip. To me. Don't make me look bad. Cold start. Easy to take. 
Hi man, it is freaking cold out. I'm gonna run him back in the garage. I'm gonna tidy up that wiring. All right guys, that's it. If you guys found this video helpful, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and guess what? See you guys on the next episode of Pat Taste Performance. Later.